Howdy folks and welcome back to part two. We're just gonna dive right into this here. As you see, I got a few little items up here. Already got some images loaded up on them. Uh, some of you may have seen items like this before in, well, I have no idea, but you may have come across it before. Uh, these are just static items that allow you to add your own images into a, into a game for your figures. So this here, this is a marble, pull up. This is a marble. This is just a cutout. We've got over here a sign, a poster. As you see, there's a couple of them. They're listed under the tools section. Very easy to find. Just open up the building menu, tools, and boom. You'll find them all right there. Now, this is real nifty because I've used items like this before. And generally, you usually have to upload your images to a website first and then use the URL code to load the image into the program. However, this one's a little more simplified. This one just ties right into your computer's hard drive. So we come on down here, left click on the item, pull down our window, just come down here to import, click on that. As you see, I already have some images loaded. But what is real nifty is right up here in the top left, if you notice, we once again have these symbols that we also find elsewhere, I think in the play window. Can't remember offhand. Doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, this right here, this allows you to go and search the web. This goes over to the workshop, although there are no images that I could find there. Uh, maybe we should start uploading some. And then this right here, this is what is going to link right to your computer. Like most files, opens right up. I already have it set where I wanted it. A few little different pieces. Let's add another one go import and there now we have a new image imported and if we go ahead and open this up again you'll see it's now been added to it as well one thing to note up here as you see this is a completely filled background that's because this is an actual JPEG if I were to use one of my PNG files which is just a different format not you up here ugh you see the background becomes translucent. That's just something to bear in mind if you're importing images that you didn't put together yourself. JPEGs will more often than not have a no background to them. The point is to have the static single image. So you, you might just come across that, but these are real simple to work with. If you notice my one friend here in the front keeps following me. He looks a little drunk, like he may want to get into it. If we go ahead and click on them, you'll see this particular one does have some options. So we have face camera, which we can turn off. And there, now he doesn't follow us. And then show base is pretty straightforward. We simply make the base disappear. So if we want to, we can pull him right down. And now it looks like he's on the ground following us. Yeah, I think he's ready to rumble. Control Z. Change that right back to where it was. And that's about... And, oh, yes, 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 yes. And right here, this is nifty. In, so say the one you put up is not your favorite. Oh, that's not what I was looking for. It's not the right size. Whatever it may be. Instead of pulling back up the building menu and pulling out another and trying them all that way, you can just simply come down here. It's a drop-down menu. And this is all of the different ones that it has. So we can switch that to transparent image. Switch it over to a poster. Hanging flag, which obviously would look ridiculous on the ground. That was cut out. So there, nice and simple. Pretty easy just to add your own images if you have your own characters created or something of that nature. You can add your own pictures, liven it up. Just a nifty little add-on. Alright, so let's move into the real meat and potatoes of this now. We're going to start diving into some custom assets, making our own items, and then a, we're going to we're going to get we're going to expand on that. We're going to get a little bit deeper. All right, so let me ask with the images in front of you here. What do you think you could create? We've got a couple of large dead trees here. We've got ourselves a deer, an eagle, different plants, some large crystals, some smaller crystals. What do you think you could create? Just let your mind run free. Because 
what I came up with was this right here. I call it the Staff of the Forest. I did upload it to the shop, so if you just feel like looking at something silly, knock yourself out. But what I've done is I've taken all of these pieces and combined them to make this one single item. One little tip, I know I've said this before, but I will continue to repeat myself. It is always good to drop in a character when you're building custom items so you can get a good idea of scale. So as you can see, this staff is just slightly taller than our character. And I have taken all of these pieces and put them into this one item. Let me give you a bit of a closer look. We're going to zoom in, shift F to focus on it, and then we'll zoom in. So over here, we have an ivy pillar, and right here, we have that same ivy pillar. And all I did was shrink it down, move it about until I found a, a good positioning, and then there, locked it in using the, the parent and child that we've gone over previously. These little small gems you see over here, these have all been clipped in around this top edge. Now, I will admit, that did take a little finagling, and some of these designs, uh, depending on how complex you want to get, could take you a little while, especially if you're like me and you get very anal on your details. But I took those gems, I changed the color a little bit, brightened them up, and I got them stuck in the top. This huge flower right here shrunk down, and I got it stuck here. Technically, that's the front. You know what, let me go ahead and turn this around so that we can get some sunlight on it. There we are, our invisible node. And spin, there we go, perfect. Zoom back in. Our little friend the squirrel down here on the ground. Well, here's our little squirrel friend sitting on one of the branches. This right here is actually these two trees combined into one stick. Uh, I simply took them, shrunk them down to the size I wanted to work with, flipped one of them over so that I didn't have a narrow taper down at the bottom. I got a good thick bottom as well as the top, and then just superimposed the two on top of each other. We've also got our friend the eagle. He's sitting right... Whoa. There's our friend the eagle sitting out on this limb, and I'm sure you noticed at the very top We've got the deer. You'll notice he's a little bit different, and that's actually quite simple. So if we click on the deer, just come down a little bit, we've got magic and a magic color. You click that on, and boom, he's colored up. So all I did was just change the color we were working with, and then I had to go back to the play window real quick. But much like our characters, you click on the animals, and they also have options for uh, emotes, not emotes, what am I saying? Poses, uh, stances, things of that nature. And so all I simply did was set it to, which one did I set it to? Lie. Was it lie? It was lie. I shrunk it down, gave it a color, stand you back up. Or not. And there he goes, and I sat him on top of the staff. Then we've got a couple of other little things around here. This little mushroom and grass you see right here on the side of the deer. Over on this side, same thing. Just shrunk it down, moved it around a little bit, set it up. And these three giant crystals in the back, well, they're actually right down here at the very bottom. Shrunk them, shrunk them, shrunk them, changed the color a bit, brightened them up, and stuck them on. And there we go. And once she was finished, as we've gone over before, I simply uploaded it to the shop. Now, one thing I really want to go over that's important back here to the builder's window. Once you've created whatever it is you're going to create, and by all means, let your mind run free. Uh, the laws of physics do not apply with this program. And I will show you here in a moment exactly what that means hopefully get you pointed in the right direction thinking in the right direction with these items but right here as with other items I've made we've got our invisible node everything 
is parented ultimately in the end to this invisible node. Now, I want to point out that placement of this node is very, very, very important <laughs> if, if you want to avoid some hilarity and some confusion. When these nodes are spawned in, so if you spawn something out of the workshop, that node, the ultimate parent that everything is put to, is going to spawn in on the floor. That's just where it starts. It's just its base position. It doesn't start floating in the air. Like everything else, it starts on the floor. That means that everything below that point is going to be buried in the floor. So if you were to actually pull this staff out of the workshop, just go back here, um, we spawn it in, and you'll notice there's a bit of a height difference here. And that's because the node, there we are, is right in the very middle. And so I have to pull it up to get it to stand here and show you. Now the question is, well, why would you put it there then? Why wouldn't you put it at the bottom so it spawns in like that? Because the staff I've made, like most staffs, is something you would hold in your hand. So if we grab that node, and we come over here to our character. So if we come up here and we spawn it in, as you see, it's now trying to connect to the various points. Well, that's an interesting one on our character. But if I want it in his hand, as you might expect the staff to be, I need that node right in the middle and now he's got it in his hand otherwise if I'd put the node at the very bottom when I spawned it in and tried to clip it into his hand it obviously would look very ridiculous as he'd be holding this six seven foot long piece of wood by the very bottom oh and one additional note I did forget to point out here but it is fun nonetheless at the very top you may have noticed this spiky ball on top of our staff we go ahead and click this one. It's called Blowing Leaves. We're going to enable it. And that's exactly what it does. It's just adding in, uh, I believe it's, it's referred to as a particle emitter. But there's a whole host of these various items right under effects here in the building menu. And this list is ridiculously long. But all of these nifty little things, check out Spiky Fire. And look at this. Look at this. We go ahead and check out what do we got here? Flamethrower pointy red. Oh, oh boy, that that looks dangerous. You know what? Hold on, I just want to see. Ooh. Guts. <laughs> I'm just holding uh, control and spinning my mouse wheel. Nice easy way to help put things down uh, without bothering with changing them around the more difficult way with number four and trying to spin them. That always gets tricky. Let's go ahead and disable that. I added that because I felt the staff of the forest needed a little extra something to it. But as I was saying about the importance of placement here, let me show you. I went and made a fire spit with uh, food already on it and it actually rotates added an auto rotator so it slowly moves if you were to put it over a campfire now when I put this together I put the invisible nodes somewhere around the handle I just felt that was a good place for it a nice place to hide it uh, in hindsight that was not a good idea and why well if we spawn this in um, because it sits right on the node as I said it will spawn into the ground right at floor level and obviously I had rotated it so this is what ended up happening. So what you would have to do if you were to spawn this in, and yes, I did upload it to the shop. The only reason I have not corrected it yet is because I did want to show you in this video exactly what I meant by the absurdity and ridiculousness if you put that in the wrong spot. So what I would need to do is put on perpendicular Z, spawn it in now, it just sits in the floor, spawn it in, and then move it. Ugh, I hit the wrong one. Control Z, 
Where is it? Where is that invisible node? Pull this back up. You're a pole. You're not an invisible node. Well, I have lost my... There it is. Rotating fire spit. I found it. Pull it up. Click it into the ground. And then, boom, you're done. So, long story short, as you saw me struggling there, uh, don't shrink your invisible node down as ridiculously small as I have because then you have a hard time finding it and locating it. And make sure you set it somewhere sort of by itself or down at a point much closer to the floor. Otherwise, as you saw, it will come in at a very, very silly angle. All right, so with this all in mind, I'm going to take you over to a map I've been working on. Haven't quite finished it yet, still getting there. And I just want to demonstrate what I mean by the laws of physics don't apply here. And when you're thinking about building in this game, whether you're making custom assets, whether you're putting together buildings or vehicles or machinery, whatever it is you're working on, you really need to think as expansively as possible. So let's just go on over here real quick. Okay, here we are at Mordenheim Estate, Schloss Mordenheim. Zoom on in here a little bit. This is a very large build. That's why it's taking me a while, and I also have other things to do in life. But let me just go ahead and rotate around a little bit. This is the exterior. And a couple of things I want to show you here. We're going to try to zoom in. Okay. First, I want to show you some of these items here. When you're searching in the shop to not the shop, in the building menu, you're often tempted to try to use your normal thinking of pieces. So, I want a floor. So you'll type in floor, and I can't spell. Or you'll type in wall, or something of that nature. But here's the thing. Floors don't have to be floor pieces. Anything you want can be manipulated, twisted, and distorted in so many different ways. For instance, these are wooden floor tile ceiling, but I use them as floors. It says floor, it says ceiling, it doesn't matter what it is. If I wanted to, I could even flip it on its side and make it a wall. And in fact, zoom in a bit, if we come in here, oh, this wasn't where I did it. Oh, there it is straight ahead. If you look right through this doorway here, these walls, that's the floor. Well, well, it says ornate wall basement, but that is the exact same piece right there. And you can manipulate these in every which direction there is to turn. Um, let's see, what else? All right, so another thing. If you notice here real quick between these two rooms, I have two different wall colorings. But these are not the same piece. And if we look here right in the middle, you can actually see these pieces are overlapping because what I've done is I simply spawned in two different types of walls. So let's see here. I'll give you a demonstration. These are ornate walls. We're going to copy. Actually, no. We're going to duplicate. Come up top just so we can show you. Well, that is terrible. It's spawning in too low. That's fine. I'll pull it up. There we are. Then we'll grab this side as well. Duplicate. It's going to be big. Yeah, it is. Because that's the piece that I made. Let me go ahead and pull you up. Bring you over. And then all I did was simply squeeze these two together as you see, they can overlap quite nicely. And if I need to, I can shrink them down. Number three. So we go ahead and we make it thinner, 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 thinner. Almost like paper. Back to two. Pull it forward. And there. And these walls are merged. We can make this one a little bit thinner if we feel so inclined. Not vitally necessary, but again, just trying to demonstrate the amount of control you have 
over these pieces. And this is how I put these walls together. So you can take completely separate different pieces and put them together and make them fit exactly as you need. As you saw, all I did was hit duplicate and this piece is an exact copy of the one I had on that wall. Whereas this one is a mile long because the piece I put in there, which was much smaller, I stretched out to what I needed. Another interesting fact about both of these pieces is technically they're both upside down. This wall piece and this wall piece, that's the bottom. That's the wood trim. Actually, that'd be the wainscoting on the bottom of it. And this is just trim run along the bottom. I flipped them over. That's all I did. So let me come down here, go back through the floor, back into my library. So on the bottom, you notice the wainscoting? That's how you would normally find it. Then I brought in the same piece, flipped it over, and there we go. Got it the other way around. Same with out here. Here's the bottom with the trim. This is the same exact piece. It's just been brought up and flipped over. And I've, I've done that in multiple spots in here, anywhere I needed to use it. See, there's my fire spit, although I don't have that one rotating at the moment. This is just another one of the effects in this fireplace here, so I put the fireplace together. Let's see if I can't. This was a little tricky, because as you see, it's inside of here, so I had to zoom in, a little fine control, but right here, there we are, soft fire additive realistic. And again, this is just another effect. Let me see here, I'll type in the first part, soft fire. And let's see here, soft fire additive realistic. And there you go, and I just spawned it in, and now we have a nice little roaring fire. Out here in the front hall, just for giggles, although they will not stay permanently, using some of those earlier pieces that we went over. I've got the good doctor, and of course, boy, I tell you, I'm bad at control today. We have the beast on the other side. Can't go wrong with Boris Karlov. Another thing to think about, too, is your angle of placement as far as viewership, because remember, you don't necessarily have to look at everything from the top down. In fact, this was designed, we're just going to dip through the floor with a sub-basement level, but it's also completely emptied out. And sometimes when you're trying to find certain pieces, it can be easier to come down here, it's the very bottom, let me just hit my focal point, and then look upwards because you never know where you're going to be able to see something or find it. And use that to your advantage when placing things. If there's something you think you might lose uh, view of, you might lose track of, drop it down through the floor or attach something secondary to it. Remember, those invisible nodes are great for trying to hide things or place things around that can be a little tricky to find again. But when I say everything can be manipulated, truly, everything can be manipulated. You can twist, you can bend, you can do all types of distortions to these items. And honestly, it's, it's quite fun. It really is to, to let your imagination run more than it normally would be allowed to. So honestly, my best advice to you is just dive in, open up a new map, just start spawning in whatever catches your eye. Open up the building menu and just go crazy. I mean, for instance, if we type in wall and we leave it under everything, all, we are going to get a list of things that you wouldn't even think of simply because somebody put wall in the tags of them. So here we have a wall grate. This is stone end cap. So obviously one of the tags says wall as this doesn't, but just go through the list sometime. Just start spinning through, and anything that catches your eye, just spawn it out there. And if there's just something a little bit different about it, feel free to change it. Do whatever you think you need to make something 
what you want it to be. So let me see here. Let's just find an example. Let's find this wall unit. We'll go ahead and slap this up here so you can see it a bit better. Get rid of our other walls. Delete. Delete. All right. So let's see here. This is obviously much wider than the wall it's sitting on. Well, we can fix that. Hit number three and shrink. Right down it goes. Number two, move it again. And there, now it's the same thickness as our wall. But you know what? It's a little tall. Let's go back to three again. Let's crunch it down. There we go. Now we've got ourselves an AC unit. But that AC unit's just a little thin. We need to cover two rooms here. So let's go ahead, stretch that right out. Move it back over. And there, now we've got an AC unit for two rooms. What else do we want to do to it? Well, let's see here. We can rotate it this way. Actually, there, that looks a bit more like an air conditioning side, doesn't it? There we go. Maybe we want it to stand up. Put it a bit more into the middle of the room for no particular reason. We'll thin that up a bit. Look at that. Look at that. Now we've got ourselves a support beam. And while we're at it, if we really want to, well, let's see, where's that lid? We didn't even know there was another option here, did we? Let's open the lid. Well, there's the lid, and look what we've done to it. Actually, that sort of does look like an AC unit. And you know what? Let's go ahead and change it. Color on this, put it up about half. How about a nice green? Looks like that's hidden right in there in that little strip. Let's pull it up some. Oh, there we go. A little bit more color. Oh, yeah, look at that. Look at that. Let's try some purples. Lovely. Just lovely. And we can still add on to this. Like I said, you just spawn things in. You know what? Let's take here this dartboard of hatred. I, I don't know what its problem is. You know what? I don't want it sitting like that, though. Open this back up. Our perpendicular Z. There we are. Nice and flat. Perfect. Always turn those off. Otherwise, you frustrate yourself. <laughs> Let's see, pull up our dartboard here. Oh, that definitely needs to be bigger. It just needs to be bigger in these, in the, this direction. <laughs> so we'll just grab here. Oh yeah, I have no idea why that looks good to me. But there, now we've got a canopy to hide under. You definitely need a color change, sir. Crank that up. We're just gonna go black. There we go. Look at that. So really, as I said before, and I'm just repeating myself, your best bet is to just open the program, open up a blank new map, and just start spawning things in. Just start twisting, bending, manipulating, folding. You'd be amazed what you might come up with. All right, that should cover it. Uh, hopefully that was not too brief, but I didn't want to go on forever rambling and rambling, repeating myself constantly. But that should about cover everything you need to know on that. Just dive in there, start putting some pieces out, and see what you can put together. And before you know it, you'll be trying to create giant structures like this, which eat up way too much of your spare time. Well, that's it for me, so until next time, Y'all take it easy.